When you think of Finnish people, you might picture icy forests, saunas, and an impenetrable language unlike anything else in Europe. But behind the snow-covered landscapes and national myths lies a genetic mystery that has puzzled scientists for decades. Who are the Finns, really? Where did they come from? And why does their DNA look so different from their European neighbors? Unlike the French, Germans, or Italians, the Finnish genome doesn't fit neatly into the standard European genetic map. For years, researchers noticed that the Finns seemed genetically isolated, closer in some aspects to Siberians than to Swedes, despite being in Northern Europe. This sparked theories of ancient migrations, unique bottlenecks, and even connections to mysterious peoples of the East. Recent breakthroughs in ancient DNA analysis have finally started to untangle the Finnish genetic puzzle. The results? Far more surprising than anyone expected. It turns out that the roots of the Finnish people stretch back to a mix of ancient European hunter-gatherers, Siberian migrants, and Bronze Age newcomers, forming a cocktail of ancestry unlike any other in Europe. And that's just the beginning. From the ancient Uralic language family to modern population structure studies, the story of Finnish genetics is a journey through time, climate, and cultural exchange. What scientists are uncovering isn't just a national backstory. It's a living example of how genetics, geography, and language intertwine to form a distinct identity that has endured for millennia. So what does it really mean to be Finnish? Let's dive deep into the DNA to find out. To understand the genetic origins of the Finnish people, we need to go back, way back, over 10,000 years ago, to the end of the last ice age. As the glaciers retreated from northern Europe, waves of hunter-gatherers followed the thawing landscape northward. These Mesolithic peoples, known as Western Hunter-Gatherers WHG, left behind traces in the genetic record of many Europeans, including the earliest inhabitants of what is now Finland. But the Finns' story doesn't stop there. Unlike most of Western Europe, where farming societies eventually replaced or assimilated hunter-gatherers, Finland remained largely on the periphery of the Neolithic agricultural revolution. The cold climate and dense forests made traditional farming difficult. This allowed ancient hunter-gatherer traditions and their genetic legacy to persist far longer in Finland than elsewhere. Then came a major turning point. Around 4,000 to 5,000 years ago, a new genetic signal began to appear in the region, originating not from Western Europe, but from the vast Siberian taiga. These were the ancestors of modern Uralic-speaking peoples. Genetic evidence shows that a group related to Siberian populations migrated westward, bringing with them not only their genes, but also the early Uralic languages, which include Finnish, Estonian, and Hungarian. This Eastern ancestry component sometimes referred to as the Siberian admixture, remains a defining feature of Finnish DNA today. It's what makes Finnish genomes stand out so distinctly from those of neighboring Swedes, Norwegians, and even Estonians. In fact, modern Finns can carry up to 10 to 15 percent of this Siberian-related ancestry, a level unmatched in Western Europe. Interestingly, this Eastern DNA is most prominent in Eastern and Northern Finland, fading somewhat toward the west, suggesting a gradual blending of populations over time. This also matches the known spread of the early Finno-Ugric languages from east to west. In summary, the roots of the Finnish people are a unique mix, local European hunter-gatherers who clung to the land for millennia, and eastern migrants who arrived with new languages, tools, and genes. This fusion set the foundation for what would become the Finnish population a blend of old Europe and mysterious Siberia. As the Bronze Age unfolded across Europe around 2000 to 500 BCE, waves of change began to reshape the genetic landscape of the continent, including Finland. Although Finland remained outside the core areas of early Indo-European expansion, it was not untouched by broader migratory and cultural currents sweeping the region. During this time, Indo-European speaking groups from the steppes particularly those related to the Corded, where, and later the Battle Axe cultures, spread across much of Northern Europe. These groups introduced new burial practices, social structures, and possibly new technologies like metalworking. Genetic studies reveal that these migrations brought a significant influx of steppe ancestry to surrounding areas like Scandinavia and the Baltics. 
In Finland, however, this influence was more muted and filtered. Rather than a direct replacement of earlier populations, the Bronze and Iron Age saw gradual contact, intermarriage, and cultural blending between the incoming groups and the indigenous populations. Some steppe-derived ancestry made its way into Finland through contacts with the Baltic peoples and Scandinavian neighbors, but it was layered on top of an already mixed hunter-gatherer and Siberian foundation. Meanwhile, the Eastern Uralic identity in Finland continued to solidify. Archaeological records show continuity in material culture, suggesting the Uralic-speaking populations maintained much of their distinctiveness even as neighboring regions absorbed more Indo-European influence. By the Iron Age 500 BCE, 800 CE, regional diversity within Finland began to deepen. Southern and western parts of the country, closer to the Baltic trade routes, were more exposed to external contacts. Eastern and northern regions, however, remained more genetically and culturally insulated. Thus, the Bronze and Iron Ages were not eras of sweeping replacement in Finland, but rather of slow genetic blending, tempering outside influences with deep-rooted traditions. This further reinforced the unique genetic and cultural identity that sets the Finnish people apart to this day. Beginning in the 12th century, Finland gradually came under Swedish control, a political relationship that would last for over 600 years. This era, known as the period of Swedish rule, had profound implications for Finland's culture, language, religion, and genetics. One might expect such a long period of foreign rule to dramatically reshape Finland's genetic landscape. However, the reality is more nuanced. While there was certainly Scandinavian migration into Finland, especially in coastal regions such as Turku, Vasa, and Åland, the genetic impact was regionally concentrated and far from overwhelming. Modern genetic studies show that Finnish populations today carry some Western European ancestry, particularly in southwestern Finland, consistent with centuries of contact and intermarriage with Swedes. However, these genetic layers tend to thin out toward the eastern and northern parts of the country, where the population remained more genetically isolated and culturally distinct. The Swedish language and institutions did leave lasting imprints. Many Finnish surnames, place names, and elements of law and governance trace back to this period. Yet culturally, the Finnish-speaking population retained a strong sense of separateness, partly due to differences in language, lifestyle, and even ancestry. The Swedish-speaking Finns, known as the Finland Swedes, form a notable minority group that still exists today. Genetically, they show slightly closer ties to mainland Scandinavians than other Finns though they are far from a distinct group. Instead, they represent a spectrum within Finland's broader genetic variation, with unique linguistic and historical roots. Thus, the Swedish period in Finland is best understood not as a time of population replacement, but of cultural layering and elite dominance. The underlying genetic fabric of Finland remained largely intact, with Scandinavian influence adding complexity to an already unique ancestral tapestry. In the early 19th century, following centuries under Swedish control, Finland entered a new political era, this time under the Russian Empire. In 1809, Finland became an autonomous Grand Duchy within the empire, a status it would retain until gaining independence in 1917. While the Russian presence was more administrative than colonial, it still left genetic and cultural traces, particularly in Finland's eastern regions. Unlike the Swedes, who had settled heavily in coastal towns, the Russians did not engage in large-scale settlement across Finland. However, eastern Finland, especially areas bordering Karelia and the Ladoga region, experienced more direct contact through trade, military movement, and occasional migration. This interaction led to small but measurable Russian genetic contributions to the local populations. Modern genetic studies reveal the people from eastern Finland especially in the Karelian and Savonian regions, carry slight affinities to populations from northwest Russia and the Volga Ural area. These signals are subtle and do not dominate the Finnish gene pool, but they highlight a gradual blending over centuries. Another important influence during this period was the influx of Orthodox Christianity in the eastern regions. 
While Lutheranism remained dominant in the West and center of the country, the Russian Orthodox Church left a cultural and religious legacy in the East that still exists today, visible in local traditions, architecture, and minority communities like the Karelians and Ingrians. Despite these influences, Finland's genetic identity remained distinct. The country's deep-rooted Finno-Ugric ancestry continued to define its uniqueness, with newer layers from Swedish and Russian rule adding nuance rather than erasing the old. Thus, the Russian era in Finland added yet another layer to the nation's complex identity, a period of tension, autonomy, and subtle integration that left behind threads in both DNA and culture. One of the most fascinating aspects of Finnish genetics is the pronounced founder effect, a phenomenon where a small, isolated population gives rise to distinct genetic traits due to limited gene flow over generations. Finland is a textbook example. For centuries, especially in the inland regions, communities remained relatively isolated due to geography, language, and historical borders. This isolation wasn't just physical, it was also cultural. Unlike many other European regions that saw constant mixing due to wars, trade routes, and migrations, much of inland Finland remained sparsely populated and insular. This led to a unique genetic pattern that sets the Finns apart from their neighbors in Scandinavia and Russia. Modern geneticists have identified what's often called the Finnish disease heritage, a set of about 36 rare genetic disorders that are significantly more common in Finland than anywhere else. These include conditions such as congenital nephrotic syndrome and salad disease. They are not a result of inbreeding, but rather the founder effect. A small ancestral population passed down rare gene variants that became amplified over generations. Interestingly, Finns themselves are not homogeneous. Western and Southern Finland, which had more contact with Sweden and Europe, shows more genetic diversity. Meanwhile, eastern and northern Finland, especially the regions around Kusamo, Kainu, and North Karelia, exhibit stronger signs of founder effects and bottlenecks, highlighting long-standing isolation. This deep-rooted genetic profile has made Finland a goldmine for medical research. Scientists studying the Finnish genome have been able to map complex diseases more easily thanks to the clarity offered by this founder effect. In a way, Finland's genetic isolation has become a global asset in the study of human biology and disease. Long before the arrival of Finnic peoples into the region, the north was already home to the Sami, an indigenous group often called the last remaining indigenous people of Europe. Their presence in the northern stretches of Norway, Sweden, Finland, and the Kola Peninsula of Russia dates back thousands of years, predating the formation of modern European nations. Genetically, the Sami are distinct not just from Finns, but from all other European populations. Studies show that they carry unique genetic markers that trace back to ancient Eurasian hunter-gatherers, some of the earliest human populations to inhabit northern Europe after the Ice Age. Unlike most other Europeans, the Sami genome contains little input from early European farmers or later steppe pastoralists, two major ancestral components common across the continent. This genetic continuity offers a rare window into Europe's distant past. One key feature is their high frequency of the mitochondrial haplogroup U5B1B1, one of the oldest in Europe. Additionally, the Y-chromosome haplogroup N1C, shared with some Finns, points to ancient ties with Siberian populations, suggesting deep connections across the Arctic belt. Despite their long-standing presence, the Sami faced centuries of cultural suppression particularly during the 19th and 20th centuries, when assimilation policies attempted to erase their language, customs, and even genetic heritage. Yet today, a cultural and scientific revival is underway. Modern genetic studies are not only preserving their story, but also challenging outdated notions of European homogeneity. The Sami remind us that Europe's genetic landscape is not monolithic. Instead, it's a mosaic of ancient and modern threads, some vibrant, others nearly forgotten. In the story of the Finns, the Sami are not just a footnote, they are an ancient and enduring chapter, offering a profound link to Europe's prehistoric past. Modern genetic research has reshaped how we view Finnish identity, not as a singular, isolated lineage, 
but as a deep and diverse tapestry woven over millennia. Far from being homogenous, the Finnish gene pool reflects layers of ancient hunter-gatherers, Easter migrations from Siberia, later Indo-European influences, and unique contributions from the Sami and other indigenous groups. What stands out is the balance of continuity and difference. While Finns share much with other Northern Europeans, they also carry distinct genetic markers, particularly high levels of haplogroup N, a paternal lineage rare in Western Europe but common in Siberia. This sets Finns apart as genetically Eastern within a largely Western European context. These findings challenge outdated narratives of national purity or isolation. Instead, they highlight Finland's position as a cultural and genetic crossroads, shaped by movement, mixture, and survival across harsh northern landscapes. For many, this evolving picture offers pride in a rich, multifaceted heritage. For others, it's a reminder that identity is not fixed by borders or myths, but continuously shaped by time, contact, and resilience. Finnish DNA tells a story of endurance, adaptation, and connection a deeply human tale etched in genes as much as in history.